guys, it's Marie Harf, and this is not Guy Benson. Hi, I'm Kat Tiv. And you, America, today are getting two blondes with glasses from 6 to 8 on Fox Radio. We have a ton of great news to talk about. Very exciting. Listen and call in. Live from Washington, D.C., fast-paced, smart talk, what's trending, and breaking news as it happens. It's Benson and Harf with Guy Benson and Marie Harf. It's Wednesday, May 23rd. You're listening to Benson and Harf coming to you live from the Fox News Radio studios in New York City. My co-host Guy Benson has taken off on a much-deserved long Memorial Day weekend vacation. And for those of you watching on the live stream, you will see that Kat Timpf, my lovely colleague here at Fox News, is filling in for him today. Hello, everybody. Thanks for listening. We're so happy to have you here. Of We're going to have some fun. Yes, absolutely. So there's a lot of news on this hump day to cover, but we're going to start with the big announcement out of the NFL that the team owners have approved a new national anthem policy that requires players to stand if they're on the field during the performance of the anthem, but gives them the option to remain in the locker room if they prefer. The teams will be subject to a fine if any player goes onto the field for the anthem, but doesn't stand or in some other way protests. We all know how politically controversial this issue has been. Mm -hmm. The players have long argued that they're trying to draw attention to police brutality. Then President Trump started weighing in with some pretty aggressive language. And on top of all that debate, the NFL has been losing viewers right. over the past year or so. Let's listen to NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. He was asked today in a press briefing about the announcement and about the controversy in Cut 31. And then we'll come back and dive right into the issue. Who's the arbiter of respect for the flag? What would be considered disrespect for the flag and the anthem? And why, why would the league and the owners kind of willingly attempt to police something that is subjective like this? Well, I think uh, the general public has a very strong view of what respect for the flag is in that moment. Uh, we have language in our policy that talks about that, standing at attention with hats off and focused. Um, and I think uh, the general arbiter will be the clubs and, and the league, and we'll work with our players and get their viewpoint also. So it seemed like Goodell was really emphasizing how the public felt, and they had to have been influenced by the controversy. The Players Association then came out and said they'd basically been disappointed because the owners had not consulted with them. So now it seems like whatever you think of the policy, there's going to be a protracted public fight between the owners and the players, what happens next? And how do you come down on this new policy? Did they thread the needle or is this just another mess? I think that it's gonna be a mess no matter what they do because nobody's gonna be satisfied. There's people that want them to have to stand no matter what. There's people that want them to be able to kneel and be able to protest and right. police brutality. I think that a lot of this probably came down to the fact that they were losing viewers and people were not watching with a lot of the politics being involved with football. I don't know if it was really so much that Roger Goodell cares so much about the flag. I think he cares a right. lot more about his money. Absolutely. And I said that earlier today on Outnumbered that this really, when they started losing viewers and people started threatening to boycott, right. it seemed like it was a business decision. Yeah, absolutely. Because what's the difference if they're kneeling on the field or if they don't come out? Because uh, you could have an entire team not come out for the anthem, and that still would be a protest, just like kneeling would be a protest. I really don't understand the difference. A lot of people are seeing this as a huge victory for President Trump and mm -hmm. for everyone else who has had issues with people kneeling during the anthem. But if they can just stay in the locker room anyways, that's still a form of protest. I don't really understand the difference entirely. Right. No, that's a great point. And I, I will point out for our listeners, Guy, even though he has taken off on a plane on vacation, has tweeted about this. So mm -hmm. in his honor, I'm going to read two of his tweets. He said, I don't appreciate anthem kneeling, which most fans find very disrespectful, but the issue was receding with very limited post-peak participation. NFL's formal rule change equals overkill, in my opinion, especially given their odd standards on other matters prefer the college game. I definitely agree with him on the college game. And I think what he's getting at is the fact that they allow football players who've been convicted of some pretty poor, right. or accused of some pretty bad crimes to keep playing. Right, absolutely. And of all the things to take a real strong stance on, I don't really understand why it's this one. The only right. thing I can think of is that it's about the money and not having people out there kneeling on the field. And a lot of Americans have issues with that and they find it disrespectful and have been kind of tuning out because of it. And I think that that's what it really comes down to. 
And Guy agrees with you on that, his second tweet. And I love how he's tweeting on the way to vacation, by yeah, the way. Yeah, he just can't stay away. He can't stay away. <laughs> this is when I'm really glad I'm not on Twitter. Um, he said, yes, the NFL had every right to do what they've done, and there were business reasons to do it. But I prefer a less stifling and polarized speech, expression, societal environment generally. And this feels like another step away from that, even as I object to the speech in question. Of course, Guy's the co-author of a book about free right. speech on college campuses. But let's take a listen to what some of the owners had to say the owners are not entirely happy with the decision. The chairman of the New York Jets has said that he will pay the fines for players on his team who protest during the anthem, that he doesn't want to put restrictions on the speech of our players. He said, do I prefer that they stand? Of course, but I understand if they felt the need to protest. There are some big, complicated issues that we're all struggling with, and our players are on the front lines. I don't want to come down on them like a ton of bricks, and I won't. On the flip side, in some way, the Browns, Cleveland Browns owner Jimmy Haslam in Cut 33 also weighed in. Let's take a listen. I know we've been actively involved in Ohio in several areas of criminal justice reform and have gotten our players involved, too, in helping them understand the political process and helping to cause change. And I think the solution that we have come up with is a good one and is Roger and, as Michael said, I think it will now allow us to all focus back on football, which is what we want to do. Right, which is kind of the point. Right. When people go to football games, do they tune in? The San Francisco 49ers owner, Jed York, said he actually abstained from the vote. He wouldn't say whether he supported it or not. So to Guy's point, it seemed like the controversy had receded. We're obviously getting – we'll be getting close to football season again at some point. I think 99 days till the season opener for the Ohio State Buckeyes, in case anyone in Ohio mm -hmm. is listening – that loves my team. Um, but they needed to fix this before the new season. Mm -hmm. They needed to tackle this in the off season, And it seems like they didn't adequately maybe work this out with the players because now a lot of them seem upset. Right, absolutely. Now they're upset. And football players make a lot of money. So I don't know how much these fines are going to be. But if they right. really want to kneel during the anthem, I think all they did is made it make you uh, more of a martyr for doing so than you were before. But, and you can't play football without players. Right. And so, you know, uh, not taking into account their full point of view, I think may have been a mistake. We're going to keep talking about this, but maybe take some calls. Our number is 833-456-1300. 833-456-1300 at Benson and Harf. Call. Kat and I are going to keep talking about it, but we'd love to hear from you, too, whether you think this was the right decision or not. Roger Goodell has obviously had a lot of controversy in addition to this. Yes. There's the concussion issue. Are you an NFL fan? I should have asked that. No, I'm not an NFL fan. I'm, I'm a hockey fan. I don't really like football. I think it's a lot of just, you know, there's like a couple seconds of action, and then there's a lot of people <laughs> walking around and spitting, and it's kind of just not really the most interesting thing, in my opinion. So if I don't care about football to begin with, I can't say I really care about this too much, and it seems like it's not going to go away no matter what. I don't think that there's anything that the NFL could do because if they just said hands off, it would be the same thing as it was last season with people tuning out. Out. And this, they felt like they had to do something, I think, to get people to tune in. But this isn't going to stop people from protesting. Either they'll stay in the locker room or they'll just kneel and pay the fine. I mean, right. it's not like they're going to get kicked off the team for kneeling. They're just going to have to pay a fine. I want to just point out that my mother, who lives in Columbus, Ohio, just texted me and said, the Browns want fans to focus on football. Seriously. Mm -hmm. The Browns, who last season did not, did not win. win. I, I do know that. Yes. I do know that they did not win. So Jane Harf is weighing in on the Cleveland Browns and their lack of football skills. It looks like we have a caller. Philip from Chicago is calling in to weigh in. Philip, you're on the line. Thank you for calling Benson and Harf. Oh, thank you for uh, taking my call. Um, uh, great show. Thank you. Why, thank why, you. Why, why is it allowed to just strip the, uh, is, that, is it the First Amendment, you know, your, your expression of free speech? And, 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 and again, it's a, it's a national anthem. It's not, I don't know, I don't even know if it's backed by the Constitution. It'll be, you know, you got to stand and then now you got to make all these rules because of the national anthem that protects all peoples. And it's supposed to be about a free country, isn't it? Philip, I mean, it's no surprise I agree with you. And the thing I keep saying is protest is actually a very patriotic form of activism. I mean, there's a long history of protest in the U.S. and, and even including in sports. 
Right. And, but, of course, NFL is, you know, a private company. Well, I mean, I guess some taxpayer dollars go into the stadiums and things like that. Yes. But um, they can do whatever policies they want for their employees, just like I have the right to free speech to say all kinds of things that I still couldn't say on the air <laughs> right. and, without getting fired. <laughs> like, I would have the right legally to say certain things, but I would get fired if I said them right now. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Philip, are you a Bears fan being in Chicago? What happened to Chicago? Are you a Chicago Bears fan? Are you an NFL fan? Uh, <laughs> they're not winning right now. <laughs> so the Bears, it's just kind of hard to follow the Bears. That's I'm true. I'm kind of an Oakland fan, actually. But Oh, nice. Uh, but, but you still watch but, them. You watch the games. This hasn't changed your view of the NFL, or has it? Well, I, I really haven't been as an avid fan after Kaepernick started his uh, uh, protest. And the way that the president talked about the players, but mostly black players, and now with the NFL coming out and and uh, uh, endorsing Trump, basically, uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to be that big of a fan this year either. Uh, until uh, 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 until there is recognized that there is some type, there is some harm that's being done to an arm. I mean, you got white women calling the police on just black right. people just at random, and right. you got cops that are shooting. Like like this guy, real quick, this last shooting at the school, and, and I can't think of where it was, in Houston, whatever. They always happened to get these shooters. I mean, they had a gun battle, but he didn't get shot. Right, absolutely. And there certainly is a reason to protest there. I do believe that it's a very important issue. And that's where Goodell's in a tough position because there's some people who are going to tune out for the opposite reason. So there's people on two different sides that are each going to be protesting and tuning out. Whether he does something or does nothing, he's going to end up losing viewers for whether he chooses to act or not act. Absolutely. Philip, thank you so much for the call from Chicago. Our number, again, is 833-456-1300. 833-456-1300. We're going to come back after the break and take more of your calls on what happened with the NFL's announcement today. I totally agree with Kat. This is a really important issue that the players are raising, and I wish Goodell had said a little bit more about that. We'll take your calls after the break. More with Benson and Harf coming up. We have two phone pads, one on the left, the other on the right. Call Guy and Marie at 833-456-1300. And choose your pad. Benson and Harf. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-297-9821. That's 800-297-9821. 800-297-9821. Hi, my name is Tim Forehand. I'm a deputy sheriff, and my job keeping me in shape is important. I've tried other products to get my weight down, but nothing has worked like Android 400. In just three months, I've dropped 51 pounds, down from 230 to 179. Plus, the weight come off in the stomach area. I've gone from a snug 36 inch waist to a 32 inch waist which i was in high school i highly recommend the android 400 to all my friends guys are you frustrated because no matter how hard you try it seems impossible to lose stubborn belly fat then discover why thousands of men each month rely on andro 400 lose belly fat gain energy and confidence and feel great about yourself Andro 400, the safe, effective, and inexpensive way to boost your testosterone. Go to andro400.com or call 888-400-0435. Hey, parents of children with asthma, here's the Breathe Easies with another one of your favorite hits. Don't smoke in the house. Don't smoke in the house. Don't smoke around the kids. In the house. Don't smoke in the car. Don't smoke in the house. 
smoking the house. Don't break my heart. Preventing asthma attacks can be as simple as making your home and car smoke-free zones. For more Breathe Easy tips to help stop asthma attacks, go to noattacks.org. Up next, well, what do you know? The Breathe Easies with another hit song, Vacuum Up the Floor. Vacuum Up the Floor. Vacuum Up the Floor. Vacuum Up the Floor. Simple steps can help your kids breathe easier. Vacuum up the floor to keep your house free of dust, dander, and dust mites. For more Breathe Easy tips to help stop asthma attacks, go to noattacks.org. Brought to you by the EPA and the Ad Council. The Dean's List with Janice Dean. A heartwarming promposal from D.C. Makes the Dean's List. Anacostia High School seniors Kiona Marie Moore and Taiwan Malik Barber are both friends and have a big event coming up. Taiwan has faced many challenges in his life. He was born handicapped, and there were many events he was unable to participate in. But his friend Kiona wanted to help celebrate their prom together. So she went all out with balloons, cupcakes, and a sign that asked if Taiwan would go to prom with her. His face was priceless. I mean, he was just so excited. And then, like, once he said yes, my heart melted. Like, I didn't know, like, if he didn't want to say yes or not. So, like, I was just so happy once he said yes. It will be his first dance, and he says, the best one ever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you both for sharing your story. Have a wonderful time at prom. You both made the Dean's List. Janice Dean, Fox News. You've heard me talk all about the Mega Life and Health Insurance Company. We're the specialists when it comes to providing affordable health insurance to those of us that are self-employed or run a small business. But have you called us yet? Maybe you haven't needed health insurance. Maybe you had it where you were, but now you're off on your own. You started your own business, and now you realize how challenging it is to find affordable health insurance. Well, you can count on the Mega Life and Health Insurance Company to provide affordable health insurance to folks just like you and I, small business owners, and the self-employed. Call right now and get yourself an affordable quote. The call is free. Here's the number. 866-500-MEGA. 866-500-MEGA, toll free, 866-500-MEGA. For affordable health insurance, call now. Home Office, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Association membership requirements vary by state, not available in all states. Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Welcome back to Benson and Harf. Our whole control room is dancing right now at that really appropriate song they just chose to bump back in. You're listening. Kat Timph and I are in New York at the Fox Radio Studios. We're looking for your calls, 833-456-1300. We're talking about the NFL's decision today on the national anthem. Vice President Mike Pence just tweeted about this. He said, today's decision by the NFL is a win for the fans, a win for the president of the United States and a win for America. Americans can once again come together around our flag, our military and our national anthem. Thank you, NFL. And then he tweeted the photo of him at the Indianapolis Colts game where he stood and then left sort of ceremoniously after right. some players didn't. I also want to read the National Football League Players Association. I referenced their statement earlier. They said the NFL chose not to consult the union in the development of this new policy. NFL players have shown their patriotism through their social activism, their community service in support of our military and law enforcement, and yes, through their protests to raise awareness about the issues they care about. So, Kat, in response to the vice president's tweet, I'm not sure that he should have said this is a win for the president. It's not really about the president. Yeah, I, I don't understand why he would tweet something like that. I don't think it should be about the president I, if winning for the sake of winning. I think if you really do care about the issue and your issue is that people aren't respect respecting the flag. It should be something more like, oh, this is a win for patriotism or this is a win for respecting the flag rather right. than Donald Trump gotcha. You know, and then it was so weird that he used hashtag winning, <laughs> like the fact that he used, you know, something from Charlie Sheen's meltdown to kind of commemorate <laughs> this. I don't maybe he didn't know where that came from and he just kind of heard it before. 
I but love it. That seemed a little strange. Maybe he didn't really know where in pop culture that really came from. That would be my guess. It's weird that the Trump administration isn't familiar with pop culture. That's yeah. surprising. Yeah. Um, we have some more callers. Adam calling from Billings, Montana. He's listening on the Fox News app. Thank you for the call. How do you feel about the NFL's decision? Well, I think if they truly wanted to protest, they should just stay on the bench during the whole game. I mean, otherwise it's pointless. Uh, you're getting paid to do a job. Go back to work. Adam, would you feel – or let me ask you this way. Are you comfortable with the way President Trump has sort of weighed in on this? Because a lot of people and, and fans of the NFL agree with you. They feel exactly the way you do. Is this something that the president should be should be talking about? No, I don't think politics should have been involved in the NFL. Uh, if they want to make a difference and they can do that in the communities off the field, you know, there's outreach programs, there's different ways to, to go about this rather than, you know, taking away from the, the sport, the game that everyone loves to watch. It did get attention, though. It did get people talking, at least some to some extent. Which was, I think, one of the points, right? Adam, thank you so much for the call. Uh, Kat, you're right, though. I think the players felt like average Americans weren't paying enough attention to the issue of police brutality with minorities. Right. And it got us talking about it, right. for better or for worse. Right, absolutely. And I personally, I, I do care about this issue. I think that there needs to be a lot done with criminal justice reform and a lot done with police brutality and a lot done with institutional racism. But I also am someone who would definitely stand for the anthem. So I think that both of those things can be true at the same time as well. Right. Right. And and in this really polarized country today, it seems like a lot of people feel like you can't right. do both. Right. And some of the players have been um, Malcolm Jenkins, actually, I think, who plays. I forget who he plays for. He plays for Philadelphia Eagles. I think he went to Ohio State, which is why I love him. He has been leading a, an effort to get players to go out into the community, meet with law enforcement, meet with advocacy organizations meet with the different stakeholders in this to actually try and affect change. That actually, I think, is a pretty good model. Also, yeah. he won the Super Bowl this year, so that's also a good model. Derek, calling from West Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Thank you for the call. You're on Benson and Harf. Where do you come down on this issue? Um, well, the, number one, politics don't belong on a football field. I mean, I, I used to, I'm, you know, I'm an avid sports fan as far as the, we got the Bruins, the Celtics, and the, the Patriots here. I mean, I didn't, like would hardly ever miss a Patriots game. I like totally tuned them out the last two years. And this before Trump, um, you know, brought the issue to the the front. I I was already tuning them out. I refused to buy any more NFL products. I mean, if 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 there was some issue on the right where they were, you know, basically throwing it in our face that the left didn't like, they would be accused that opposites. You know, they would be the, the table would be turned around. And, and the whole issue of police brutality with minorities. I mean, police have brutality with every not just minorities i mean if you you, you come against a, a cop and and he's a tough guy and you're getting mouthy with him i mean when i was a teenager i'm a white guy i mean i've got my clock cleaned a couple of times by the police nobody cares i'm not going to go out there and kneel in the field say hey, i got whacked in the head by a cop with a flashlight because i got mouthy with him one night nobody cares but if it's a black person then it's you know police brutality on a minority so i totally disagree with the whole subject that they're throwing in my face Derek, thanks for the call. Um, I appreciate uh, your point of view on this. I, I think where Kat and I, and I don't want to speak for you, but have mm -hmm. come down is that there is an issue with brutality. Yeah. And, and all you have to do is watch some of these videos, and I don't know what the answer is. Right, absolutely. I, I mean, I agree. But it is something that we need to be talking about. Absolutely. And I, I just mentioned Malcolm Jenkins. He put out a statement while well, he says he disagrees with the decision. This will be debated for days and weeks to come leading up to the season. I'm sure we will talk about it again. More Benson and Harf coming up after the break. The entire world watched. They watched each step down the rungs of that small ladder, one after another, and waited with great anticipation for that last step. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 
At that moment, humanity saw the impossible become the possible. And today, the sky is not the limit. Achievement. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. I'm Ashley Dvorkin with a Fox celebrity profile on Amaya Scott, who plays Cotton on Fox's Star. Fox News Radio, I'm Rich Dennison. President Trump talking about the MS-13 gang today during a roundtable on New York's Long Island. Crippling loopholes in our laws have enabled MS-13 gang members and other criminals to infiltrate our communities. The president again calling members of the gang animals, blaming Democrats for lax immigration laws. A federal judge ruled today that President Trump cannot block Twitter users from his account, saying it violates the user's First Amendment protections. 86 illegal immigrants were found inside a refrigerated tractor trailer during a traffic stop in southern Texas yesterday. The smugglers are treating these illegal aliens as if they are car cargo, not human beings. Carla Provost with the Border Patrol says the immigrants ranged in age from 3 to 59, and many were unaccompanied children. Two suspected smugglers were arrested. Fox News. We report. You decide. A few years later, I heard that a friend's cousin's son had been diagnosed with autism. I still wasn't sure what that really meant. When I went to college, my roommate's brother had autism. When I moved to the city for work, my best friend called me and told me his son had been diagnosed with autism. We were both in shock. I still remember the day I walked into the house and saw that look on my wife's face. I knew something was wrong. I'll never forget how I felt when she said, our son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 68 children is diagnosed with autism. That's about a 30% increase in two years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Computer security threats such as spam, spyware, viruses, and hackers invade your business every day through email, instant messaging, web browsing, and your company's website. With no software to install and no per-user license fees, Barracuda Network's firewalls are easy to set up and affordable. Do what 50,000 other companies have done. Reclaim your network with a Barracuda Network's firewall. For a free evaluation unit, call Barracuda Networks, 888-ANTI-SPAM, 888-ANTI-SPAM, or go online to barracuda.com. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037, so he can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman, something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting Steve2037? I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right, but don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. The following is an OnStar conversation. OnStar Emergency, this is Dean. Yes, I lost my purse, but the keys in my car. Well, that's okay. We can get that unlocked for you. Can I get your PIN number? Okay, it's 06. OnStar can send a signal to unlock your doors in most cases. The reason why I need to get in my car is because I'm on my way to work. Now I have gone ahead and I've sent the signal out to your vehicle. Okay. The peace of mind OnStar offers is more affordable than you might think. I have some good news. It just unlocked. It did? It did. So can I try? Go ahead. Oh, it's open. Wonderful. How, oh, thank you so much. Please. You just saved my job. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad I could. <laughs> thank you. Oh, no problem. Have a great night. The first year of OnStar service is included on new OnStar-equipped GM vehicles, and unlimited use of all safety and security services costs only $16.95 plus tax per month after that. To experience OnStar, press your blue button or visit OnStar.com. OnStar by GM. Benson and Harf. 
It's hump day. We're covering all the news. I'm Marie Harf here in New York with Kat Timp, who's filling yes. in for Guy Benson. Yes. It's fun, right? Yeah, I'm having a great time. We're having a little bit of fun. Guy is on his way out of town for Memorial Day. I am headed out of town also. Every year, my family and I go to the Indy 500. We're big Indy car racing fans. So, um, Oh, nice. Yeah, really? That, that's interesting. I know. But everyone's surprised when I tell yeah. them that. Um, no, but my parents went to Indiana University, so did I, and they've been going for like 40 plus years, and I started going when I was about six. Can't so. say I've ever been. It's actually, I will, I love IndyCar racing, so yeah. I'm going to talk about it a lot this week and next. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm here today, we're here, and we're talking now about Starbucks, and I should point out for the live stream, I actually have a Starbucks in studio. Nice. It's not planned. Nice. Um, so there was this controversy in April when two African-American men were arrested in a Philadelphia Starbucks after one had asked to use the restroom but was told only paying customers could use them. He sat down, was waiting to meet a business associate before they purchased something, and the police came and arrested both of them. Right. We Which all is unacceptable, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> and it ignited this whole controversy. Starbucks on May 29th is closing its 8,000 company-operated U.S. locations for racial bias training because of this, but now they've issued new guidelines for their restrooms, basically a new bathroom policy, and for their, their location. So anyone can now sit in a Starbucks store or patio or use the bathroom without buying anything. The company said in a statement on its website, certain behaviors such as smoking, drinking alcohol, or sleeping aren't allowed. They're trying to make clear what can and can't be done, and it seems like they've just said, Basically, anything goes. You don't have to buy anything. I think that this is the worst idea ever. <laughs> wow. I think it's so bad. It's If you can just go there and just hang out, what's the point of even buying anything? When I used to work from home a lot, I couldn't always get things done from home. So I would go and take my laptop and go to Starbucks, get a coffee, right. get a snack, sit there and work. But if you're just allowed to go in there without buying anything, I think all the seats are going to be full of, I don't know, like, t who's always looking for someone to hang out? Like, teens? It's going to be a bunch of teens in yeah, there yeah. hanging out, mm -hmm. taking up all the seats and just sitting there. There's going to be maybe nowhere for actual paying customers to sit and have a coffee. Right. And when you went and took your laptop, I, when I used to do that in grad school or college, I would feel guilty if I didn't buy something. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't think of not buying anything. Right. I would never imagine it. And I, I, there's just not going to be seating for paying customers. I think that it just makes sense for the seating to be available for people who are actually buying the things in the store. I right. mean, <laughs> I, should I just like throw my birthday party there since it's yes. just, you know what I mean? Like if I'm having a birthday party, just invite everyone to Starbucks. We don't need to buy anything. Just hang out. And, and it just seems ridiculous to have, turn Starbucks into essentially like a public park. Right. When it's a business. Right, it's a business. It actually makes a lot of money. And it seemed like they had two options here. One option was to either say everybody had to buy something. Right. Right. To use the bathroom or to sit. Or you don't have to buy anything. And I know there are some coffee shops now that don't have outlets like in the wall. So right. people can't take their laptop and keep charging it and work forever. We want some calls from you, 833-456-1300. Again, that number is 833-456-1300. I think we have one call from Anna in South Carolina. Anna, you're on the line with Benson and Harf. What do you think about this Starbucks decision? I was in New Orleans two weeks ago, and in order to use the bathroom, I had to purchase something to get the key code to go to the bathroom at a restaurant. Seems pretty normal. So, right. I mean, to me, if if... I just think everything's getting so overblown in today's world. It's just gotten to the point it's just crazy. Um, if I'm running a business and I have 40 seats in there, I want paying customers in my business. That's what pays my bills. Right. Just does not seem like a smart business decision. I kind of can't even believe that they're doing this. I don't know how they're not realizing that they're probably going to make less money because they're doing this. I mean, just to be to seem nice, I guess, but seeming nice doesn't really make you any money. I think everyone's so afraid nowadays of being pointed at as racist that we're kind of going the complete opposite way to, to these bizarre extremes. And I think that's what Starbucks has got caught up in. They're so afraid they're going to lose money that they have gone completely overboard. Anna from South Carolina, thank you for the call. We have another call, Bob from Ocala, Florida, who has some thoughts on this too. Bob, thanks for calling. You're on the air. Yeah, th thanks for taking my call. How you doing, you guys? Doing great. You know, I just I think it's a classic uh, ivory tower syndrome where the leadership doesn't really know what it's like to live in the trenches. I'm just envisioning 
Orlando, Las Vegas, big cities where people are homeless and they're going to go in and get some air conditioning. I mean, I, I can just I can just see what the bathrooms are going to look like. Yeah, I kind of had that thought as well. I know it's not it's not a pretty thought, Bob. Thank you for calling. So, Kat, they're closing their stores nationwide on May 29th to do racial bias training. I actually thought that was. I mean, if they do it right, I kind of thought that was a good idea. I right, but I've a lot of studies show that racial bias training doesn't really do any good, and I don't think that they care. I I think that it's more of a PR move than yeah. anything else to try to say, see, look, we do care about this issue. We're going to close our stores for this training. They care more about how they look than actual results. I think that that's what this is really about, and um, that at least makes a little more sense than this policy of just like letting everybody hang out at Starbucks without having to buy anything. That doesn't have anything to do with racial anything that just seems like an idiotic business decision and i i i see it per potentially not lasting i don't know if they're going to continue I, I i'm seeing that there's going to be a lot of videos of weird things happening at starbucks <laughs> it's going to be like a new hashtag of things you know why not just go and bring a board game and have your family board game night there you know get some air conditioning or whatever if you don't have air conditioning at home go hang out at the starbucks it's going to be full of people too full of people who aren't paying right. to even have paying customers in there it doesn't make any sense I, I, I agree. I like the point that who knows how long this will last. Yeah, I, I don't. Like, <laughs> it doesn't seem sustainable to me at all. It doesn't. Um, but in the age of cell phones, I mean, this is how we got where we are. And we sort of talked about it in the last segment, too. Mm -hmm. The reason there was so much outcry in part was because there was video of these two black right. men getting arrested, seemingly for just sitting there, which... I will say there are times when I'm waiting for a friend in Starbucks. I will wait for them to purchase something, right. and but nobody's even arresting then, me. Right, of course. But even then, I feel kind of guilty that I'm not buying something. Right, I'm, I exactly. Kind of, I like will tell the barista, like, I have a friend coming. Like, <laughs> don't worry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get something. I'm gonna buy something because that's just what what you do. That's right. why you're there. It's not just a place to hang out. Totally. I don't understand. Like, imagine going into a restaurant and not eating any food just to kick it in the booth. That seems <laughs> weird, right? But it's the exact same thing. Let's go do that after the show. Yeah, what just sit. In we'll take somewhere. my Starbucks cup and we'll yeah. sit there. Um, I think we have another caller from Lake Bluff, Illinois. Adam, where do you come down on this? Thank you for calling. You're on the air. Hi, Marie. Hi. Uh, just real quick, you're well-traveled. So I used to work at Aviano Air Base in Northeast. I have these old buildings that they would convert into basically like maybe 50 bathroom stalls. And they were pay you you pay to use them, and they should do the same thing in, in the U.S. in big cities like New York, Chicago, L.A. And then, uh, like for Starbucks, they could issue out a token uh, whenever you buy something, or not. In case of an emergency, they give you a token. You got five minutes in the bathroom, and then uh, you know the doors unlock or something, and you got to get out of there for the next person, and then. You could also have something like you do in uh, in Paris, where it's basically like a high tech scale bathroom that you go into that seals, and again you pay for it, and you get X amount of time, and it warns you when you're at the end, and it's made for basically one person at a time. Adam, thank you for the call, Cat. What do you, and he's right. There are in other countries these sort of public restrooms what do you think of this right i mean that'd be nice if that was in the u.s because there's places in you know if you're in new york and you're out there's really nowhere to actually go and use the bathroom there's really aren't any public restrooms anywhere and you pretty much have to buy things but i've definitely gone in places and bought like a soda or something in order to use the restroom which is not really a huge deal but see my go-to is always if i really have to use the ladies room hotels Hotel lobbies. Yeah, I've done that before. You can just walk in. You can and just walk in. You look, you, like, you're you look like you're there. staying there, and yeah. they don't know any better. Yeah, I've definitely done that. Yeah. But it's I a good I, tip for all of you listeners. Out yeah, there. absolutely. <laughs> but I just I, I see this definitely backfiring on Starbucks. It's going to be a zoo. I see this. At least it'll happen where it's going to just be a zoo in some of these locations. Yeah. Well, and in cities, I mean, Starbucks kind of already is. It kind of already is. I've seen weird <laughs> things happen in Starbucks as it is because a coffee's not that expensive. I mean, I've definitely gone and had a coffee and sat there all day and taken up seating and kind of felt bad about that. But I, I just, especially because they're being so public about it, now everybody knows, like, oh, right. hey, we can just go hang out at the Starbucks. We don't need to buy anything. This is so bizarre. Uh, we have another call. I love so many callers who have thoughts on Starbucks. Abdul from New York City, just down the street somewhere. How do you feel about Starbucks' decision? Hi, thank you for taking my call, first of all. Um, I, I see both sides of it from a, from a, 
I, I like the fact that the CEO, you know, first of all, when the controversy first started, I like the fact that he responded right away to it and, you know, addressed it. So it, at least he makes it known that the company is aware of it and is actively doing something about it. The other side of it is from a business standpoint, like Kat said, that's the place we fill with teenagers every day. And teenagers, <laughs> are, as you know, are not the biggest contributors to our economy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. From a business standpoint, I, I get exactly where he's coming from. So I get both sides of it. I get both sides. I just think he's going about it the wrong way. You know, if somebody who just wants to come in and use the bathroom, they really shouldn't have to buy anything. But if they want to sit down, then they should have to contribute to the business. Then well. maybe they should. Abdul in New York, thank you for the call. It seems like there's a lot of opinions on this, but I agree with Kat's point. We'll see how long this lasts. Yeah. Because if they start losing money or the start, you know, re restrooms there start getting nasty. Yeah. And they already are kind of nasty, they already to are be honest. Nasty, especially yeah. in New York yeah. and D.C., where I live. Okay. Thank you for the calls. We're going to chat about much more coming up next. Stay close on Benson and Harf. Watch us on BensonandHarf.com if you haven't. Let your voice be heard. Call 833-456-1300 and talk to Benson and Harf. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the Federal Tax Management Helpline that has been set up for you, 800-233-8540. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. If you owe more than 10000 in taxes, call for free information and to see if you qualify. Take down the number now for the Federal Tax Management Hotline, 800-233-8540. That's 800-233-8540. 800-233-8540. Do you have an idea for an invention or new product? Do you think companies would be interested in your idea? Do you want to try to get a patent? Then call InventHelp now. InventHelp keeps your idea confidential and explains every step of the invention process. We create professional materials representing your idea and submit it to companies who are looking for new ideas. We have more than 9,000 companies who have agreed to review ideas in confidence. If a company shows interest in manufacturing your invention, we can negotiate on your behalf. We have helped over 10,000 clients receive patents. We also offer services including 3D modeling and animation demonstrating your idea, prototyping services, and we use state-of-the-art technology to show InventHelp client ideas to additional companies. Join the thousands of people just like you who chose InventHelp to pursue their idea. We are experienced. We are working for you. We are InventHelp. Call us for free information at 1-800-545-0785. That's 1-800-545-0785. Again, 1-800-545-0785. This is Fox News Talk. Headline Rewind. 1992. Today we have closed the book on apartheid and that chapter is finally closed. I experimented with marijuana a time or two and I didn't like it and didn't inhale. It's sad to see the community that I grew up in go up in flames like this. It really is. I just want to say, you know, can we can we all get along? Can we can we get along? It doesn't help matters when primetime TV has Murphy Brown, a character who supposedly epitomizes today's intelligent, highly paid professional woman, mocking the importance of fathers by bearing a child alone. It has been an honor and a privilege to come into your homes all these years and entertain you. I bid you a very heartfelt good night. Dade County as we know it, especially from the Kendall area south, is never going to be the same. It is fundamentally destroyed. News as it happened then. News as it happens now. This is Fox News Talk. We've entered a new investment era, according to Craig Smith, author of Rediscovering Gold in the 21st Century. Craig, tell us about this new era. Sure. This new investment era means taking more responsibility for our money. The 18-year bull market on Wall Street may well be over, and many analysts agree that owning gold coins is very prudent. Certain U.S. gold coins have already doubled since 1999, while most stocks appear way overvalued. 
I discuss this and much more in my latest Real Money Perspectives newsletter, U.S. Gold Coins, the most trusted asset on earth. Thanks, Craig. Read all about it in Craig's latest newsletter, free for the call at 1-800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. That's 1-800-BUY-COIN. Prepare for a new investment era today by calling 1-800-BUY-COIN and requesting Craig's free newsletter. Until next time, this is an Idea Factory Minute. Welcome back to Benson and Harf. I'm Marie Harf. I'm here with Kat Timp live from our studios in New York today because Guy is off on a much deserved vacation. We're ending the hour with a, I would say, bizarre story. Yes. There's a 30 year old who's been living with his parents in the basement. No judgment. Judgment. I got judgment. Total judgment. Total. I lied. Total judgment. Um, and his parents have tried to evict him. And this has caused a protracted legal fight between the son and his parents. Let's take a listen to a news wrap of this situation that kind of lays it all out in Cut 39. Michael Rotundo made his case to state Supreme Court Justice Donald Greenwood while mom and dad looked on. Uh, I'm not a burden to them in the home. They don't uh, provide laundry or food. Despite getting five written notices from his parents dating back to February, Rotundo insists he should have been given six months notice to move out. I, I just wanted you know, a reasonable amount of time to vacate with consideration the fact that I was not really prepared to support myself at the time where I was served these notices. He says he has a job, but wouldn't answer any questions about the line of work he's in. During the proceeding, the judge applauded Rotundo's legal research, but presented him with a similar case, which proves he's not eligible for a required six months notice to leave. Now, granting the, uh, granting the uh, eviction, I think the notice is sufficient. A ruling Rotundo called outrageous. I don't see why the judge wants to throw people out on the street. Rotundo's parents and their attorney had no comment leaving court, but we did get some insight into the dynamic under their roof. Well, we just, we don't talk, we see how it goes way. There's no, uh, there's been no instances of anything. We so, just don't communicate. We just don't communicate. Despite today's outcome, Rotundo says his fight isn't over yet. I mean, I don't, I'm seeking appeal, so are we closed? Move to close. Okay, this is so bizarre. Yeah. His parents actually sent him a letter on February 18th where they gave him $1,100 to move out and he took the money and didn't move out. What? Probably spend it on video games, I would guess. And Cheetos. And Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would guess. So what is happening here? I think that this is sad. If you're 30, you should really kind of want to move out by that point. I left home at 17 and I never moved back in because right. I kind of wanted to go out and be on my own and do my own thing. Totally. I don't understand why you'd still want to live with your parents. This also makes me not want to have children because what if they don't leave? <laughs> you have to take them to court. I don't want to ever have to take my children to court, so maybe I just won't have them to make sure this doesn't happen. Well, I love how he said, the son said, yeah, we don't talk. Like, they don't speak? Yeah, that's super awkward. I guess he just hangs out in the basement all day. I mean, it doesn't sound like this is a dude that's got a lot of friends. Oh. He probably just plays video games all night in the basement by himself, and the video games are his friends, and he probably has a sad life. But this is, uh, I would think, going to be a good thing for him, you know, to get him out there. He's got to he's gotta get out there, and they're offering him money. I know. The mom's offering to help him find housing. I mean, what more do you want? I don't even know how you get here as yeah. a family. I, wanna, I want to... The media to follow this guy not in a creepy way yeah i want in six months i want to know like i want a happy ending i want him to like have a house and have a job and it's also weird that he wouldn't say what line of work he's in yeah i don't think he has one i think that what if does he that mean? if he were smart he could become an internet sensation right he right sh he should create a youtube he account. should create a youtube account he should create a twitter and kind of just make fun of himself for being such a loser and if he made fun of himself for being a loser i think he could get some you know you know maybe get his own uh, vh1 or mtv show Michael Rotundo, if you're listening, Kat just gave you a really good business yeah. idea. Yeah, because, you know, MTV loves train wrecks. Love and them. they love to film them. And this guy sounds like a train wreck. He could end up becoming more successful than either of us or both of us put together uh, in re the reality TV world if he just makes his meltdown more public, which he's been doing a little bit, but he can't let up. He, he's got to keep everyone updated. He has, and he has to keep 
upping it, right? Yeah. He needs an Instagram account. He needs something else. He should live stream fights with his parents. He should definitely live stream I would fights watch, with his parents. I would watch if he live streamed fights with his parents. We would watch that. Yeah, I would absolutely watch that. I think but so. they don't talk. Christi- <laughs> but I they should start talking and film it. They, yes, yes. They can just make it up. Christine, you seem to have thoughts on this. You're wildly waving your arms in the control room. Kat, you're being so mean. Don't How you, am I being mean? I don't think that was mean. I just gave him an idea. I'm it helping him out. It was a good out. idea. Maybe this man needs love from his parents. Apparently, I mean, the the parents are upstairs and they're writing letters to their son. That's their that's their blood. Maybe he needs just a little comforting, a little... Um, you know, maybe something is wrong with those parents now, that the situation got as bad as it did. They gave him 30 years of love, and he's not moving out. I mean, what else do you do at that point? They probably want to have, you know, their little empty nest phase. But where it's not like they're, he's bothering them. He says he goes in his basement. He doesn't even talk to them. Maybe he eats all the food in the fridge. He, he said, said that he doesn't. And he said they don't do his laundry. They don't provide laundry services. Well, you should certainly be doing your own laundry by the time you're 30. So that's, you know, yeah. bare minimum. They said he doesn't even help out with chores around the house, though. You'd think that you'd at least do your chores. Five-year-olds do their chores. Agreed. I think it's bizarre. I agree. His parents seem very cold. Like, how yeah. do you get to a place where you're taking your son to court? I didn't move out till I was 27. My father was crying when I left, so. Any day now, girl. Any day. Um, but, but did you... But were you uh, c- completely useless and not helping your parents out at all around the house? I mean, I think that, that that's an, a big difference, too, is the fact that he, he's th- he, they're saying he doesn't do anything at all to help, and he doesn't even talk to them. He's just sitting there living off of them without even talking to them. It sounds like you and your parents are, were close, and they appreciated having you, ar- you around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know? You guys know me. It also they says, love me. <laughs> of course they did. It also says that his parents wanted him to move his broken car and sell some of his belongings, such as his stereo and his weapons. Weapons. So he's just hanging out with a bunch of weapons. Now I'm afraid of him. Don't That's... forget the stereo. Do you think it was like a boombox? <laughs> oh, there's too much here to unpack. I can't. Thank you for listening. This is Benson and Harf, live from New York. More coming up. Hey America, we need to have little talk. We've got more food in our country than we know what to do with. Food at the grocery store and food in the vending machines, fast food, health food, and seafood. We've got so much food that anything people don't buy, we just throw out. Yet 17 million kids in America struggle with hunger. That ain't right. Luckily, the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Yeah, I made that up. It's kind of catchy. Hello, people. This isn't rocket science. We could solve hunger today. To start, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. That's a website. Duh. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Can you tell if the surfaces in this kitchen are crawling with bacteria that could cause chronic arthritis? Listen. Can't, can you? You can't see it either. Wash surfaces, utensils, and hands frequently with soapy water while preparing food, especially when handling raw meats or eggs. Raw food may contain bacteria that can make you very sick or worse. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year, and roughly 3,000 will die. But you can keep your family safer by cleaning with soap and water as you go. Learn more about this and other important information. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. That's foodsafety.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council.
He wants answers. I'm Lisa Lacerra, Fox News. President Trump again slamming reports an informant infiltrated his campaign ahead of a meeting with the FBI and the deputy attorney general about the Russia probe. President Trump said that what he wants is total transparency from the FBI and from Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. He also once again repeated an unsubstantiated allegation that an FBI informant was embedded into the Trump campaign. All you have to do is look at the basics and you'll see it looks like a very serious event, but we'll find out. When they look at the documents, uh, I think people are going to see a lot of bad things happen. Speaking to reporters, the president said he wasn't trying to undermine the special counsel investigation. The president has coined a new term for the FBI's investigation during the campaign, calling it Spygate. Fox's John Decker at the White House. Democrats call the meeting highly inappropriate because just two House committee chairs are invited. They're demanding a bipartisan group be able to attend. A White House team on its way to Singapore this weekend ahead of President Trump's planned meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says he expects the meeting to happen. He asked for the meeting. The president agreed to meet with him. I'm very hopeful that that meeting will take place. Yesterday, the president indicated the meeting could be delayed. And Pompeo responding to a complaint from a U.S. government worker who claims they were experiencing abnormal sounds and pressure similar to what U.S. diplomats in Cuba experience this happened in China. We're concerned about it. It's a, a serious medical incident. We want to make sure and take care of every one of our officers serving overseas. Um, we've learned about it only recently. We are still trying to identify um, all the circumstances surrounding it. The State Department saying they don't know what caused the symptoms. The incidents in Cuba caused a strain in U.S.-Cuban relations. Fox News, fair and balanced. Wildfires burn millions of acres across the country each year. And each year, wildland firefighters battle to contain them but they can't do it alone. For some communities, it's not a question of if wildfires strike, but when. And a single ember can travel more than one mile. As it twists and turns and floats through the air, that single ember can find its way to where you live and can ignite and destroy your home or your community. That single ember can be just as dangerous as the wildfire itself. You can't control where the ember will land, but you can control what happens when it does. You can take action now to prepare your home and your community for wildfire. Get fire adapted. Learn what you can do now to reduce wildfire damage later at fireadapted.org. Prepare, protect, prevail. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Learn more at fireadapted.org. The Pentagon rescinds its inv invitation to China to naval exercises in the Pacific next month. China had participated in the past two biannual exercises in 2014 and 2016. The move comes a day after President Trump accused China's President Xi of setting back talks with North Korea and amidst contentious trade talks. U.S. officials also accused China of continuing to militarize disputed islands in the South China Sea, deploying missiles and a nuclear-capable bomber as recently as last week. On a visit to the White House in 2015, China's president promised he would not militarize the islands, but new satellite imagery and video suggests otherwise. At the Pentagon, Jennifer Griffin, Fox News. Royal wedding guests not hanging on to their swag bags. Instead, they're making big bucks on them. Over 2,600 members of the public were invited to the grounds of Windsor Castle for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's big day and given tote bags with the couple's initials inscribed. In some included a fridge magnet, a gold chocolate coin, a tub of shortbread, and a voucher for 20% off the Windsor Castle gift shop. As of Tuesday, 34 of the party favors were listed on e-commerce site eBay, with prices starting at $150 into the thousands. At least one listing claims the money made for the sale would go toward charity. A London-based HR manager making headlines for selling her bag for $28,000. I'm Kristen Goodwin, Fox News. The estate of Michael Jackson objecting to an ABC TV special airing tomorrow on the end of his life, issuing a statement that the show called The Last Days of Michael Jackson is not approved by his heirs and will most likely violate their intellectual property rights. They also called the special an unauthorized attempt to exploit Jackson without respect to his legacy or his children. Lisa LaSara, Fox News Radio.
Stand by. Benson and Harf will begin in 30 seconds. from Washington, D.C., giving you perspective from both sides of the aisle. It's Benson and Harf. Happy Wednesday. I'm Marie Harf. I'm here with Kat Timp, who's filling in for Guy Benson. This is Benson and Harf coming to you live from our New York City studios tonight. Now, for those of you who are regular viewers or listeners, you may know that I am no longer on Twitter. I deactivated <laughs> my Twitter account. I really hate Twitter. I think it's a cesspool. It is a cesspool, but I'm still addicted to it. People are? are so mean to me on there sometimes, but I still can't get off of it. I can't help myself. I don't know. I'm so addicted to it. I'm on it almost constantly. Now, do you engage with the people who are mean to you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that feels better than not engaging, right? Yeah, I do. I, I do engage. It can be fun for me to engage <laughs> with the people who are mean to me. People are awful on Twitter. So in the Twitter news of the day, um, President Trump has his famous or infamous Twitter handle at real Donald <laughs> Trump. And he has gotten in the habit of blocking average Americans who he doesn't want to follow him. They usually have gone after him on something on Twitter. Right, they've yeah. responded to him. And the president, though, has been challenged in court. So a group of Twitter users who had been blocked by Donald Trump took him to court and basically argued that this is a public forum he's a public figure and that they have a right protected by the first amendment to view what the president of the united states is tweeting and they argue that in part based on the fact that sean spicer when he was white house press secretary said that his tweets are official statements and that the white house then often sends out official statements from what he tweets so today a federal court judge in Manhattan ruled that Trump's Twitter account is a designated public forum and protected by the First Amendment, said that he cannot block people who reply to his tweets with differing opinions, that that constitutes discrimination, and she made it clear that those people needed to be unblocked. I'm not sure I agree with this. It doesn't really seem to make any sense to me because this isn't his POTUS account. This is his personal Twitter account. But he so, uses it like an official account, right? I, I mean, I, essentially. I guess he does, but it's still a personal account. And also, it's not like if he blocks you, you can't read the tweets because it's a public account. So all you have to do is log out and then just go to his account and you can still read them even if he's blocked you. That's right. So I don't understand what the point of this is. And I bet you it's going to take him a, a while to unblock people because he's blocked seems like a lot of people yes. on this account. I don't know if he's going to have to hire someone to just go and do all the clicking for him. But um, Dan Scavino is going to be in the White House yeah, unclicking, unclicking. Someone's going to have a job to do. Um, I, I just, I, it doesn't really seem to make sense to me because I think you should be able to block whoever you want to block on your own personal account. It's interesting. When I was in government, there was a, it was, you know, Twitter didn't really exist when the Obama administration started. I mean, it didn't exist in the form it does today. So over the time I was in government, the rules about government tweeting sort of evolved and by the end there were very clear rules that if you had a government account it was the government's property it was all subject to the freedom of information act and it had to stay there when you left so for example the secretary of state twitter account became secretary pompeo's at right. potus became donald trump's right. so you're right to make the distinction the problem is donald trump uses at real donald trump as sean spicer said for official to, to put out official statements so that's the problem i mean beyond the legal question though there's the sort of not ethical but there's the question of should the president be blocking people he doesn't agree with anyways it does seem a little bit juvenile of course for him to be blocking people but i i personally don't block people so much as i mute them i like to mute them and what's the difference explain for people what the difference is well when you mute somebody you don't see anything that they say to you but they can still see ah. your tweets so i love doing that because i know those people are still going at it and talking smack to me and wasting their time hating on me 
and thinking that I'm actually seeing it, even though I'm not seeing it. And there's something satisfying about the fact that they're still wasting their time, even though it doesn't affect me anymore. I feel like when I block somebody, if I, I and there have been people that I have blocked, mostly people of like scaring me a little bit. Right. Um, but it, it gives them a sort of satisfaction, like, oh boy, I bothered her so much, she had to block me. So I kind of don't really block people. There might be a couple people that I've blocked. Do people know if you've muted them? No. They don't. They, they know don't if know. you've blocked them. Right, but exactly. They don't know if you've muted them. Which is them. what's so satisfying because I don't have to see it and they have no idea. So they keep, they just keep at their keyboards like, and they have no idea that I can't even see it. I see. But, you know, my question is is Donald Trump, and maybe he is, is President Trump reading? The responses to his tweets because now he gets hundreds of thousands it seems like he is if he's blocking people. i know so who's who's doing the blocking it seems very thin-skinned which yeah is I'm, a way some people would describe the president yeah and it, he, he can be that way for sure but again this is his personal account which is why this decision doesn't really seem to make sense to me well we'll see if they end up challenging it in court the Department of Justice, I think, let me see if I have this here, put out a statement that basically said something like, we respectfully disagree with right. the ruling, um, and they're looking at what they may do in response. But again, if the Justice Department is defending him, that makes it seem kind of official. Yeah. Um, and the, the lawsuit that was brought said that that account is a digital town hall in which the president and his aides use the tweet function to communicate news and information to the public. Basically, they were saying this is a violation of the First Amendment, and a, a judge so far, one judge, has agreed. I just, I don't see how this can stand. I really, really don't. Like, again, it's his personal account, and I can't imagine actually bringing this lawsuit. You're not really missing out on anything, especially because all you have to do is log out to read the tweets. It's not like because he blocked you, you there's no way that you can access this information. It's very easy to still access it. It's interesting. There have also been people, not who've brought lawsuits, but who've written to Twitter complaining that President Trump violated their terms of use because of his threatening language. Mm -hmm. And Twitter actually, a few months ago, I don't remember exactly when,